is kind. Just think about it this morning. When everything is over, what will be said of you? What are those things you're doing right now? Oh, when it's all been said and done, there is just one thing that matters. Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, all your treasures will mean nothing. Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Oh Lord, your mercy so great that you look beyond our weakness and find purest gold in my clay turning sinners into sins I will always sing your praise even not an for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done. You're my life when life is gone. When it's all been said and done, there is just one thing that matters did you do your best to live for truth did I live my life for you Lord I live my life for you wherever you are, lift your two hands above your head, and with a loud voice, everyone say, thank you, Jesus. Make it louder, say, thank you, Jesus. The loudest you can say, thank you, Jesus. Everyone that is truly grateful to God, and everyone that is set for an encounter in today's service, lift up your two hands above your head like a Jewish man. And with a loud voice, begin to give God thanks and praise. With a loud voice, with a loud voice, begin to give God thanks and praise. Bless his name. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. He's worthy to be magnified. There is no one like him. There is no one to be compared to him. Ancient of days. The one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come, the Holy One of Israel. Give him praise, everyone. Bless his name, bless his name. Bless him some more. Let the Lord hear your voice of appreciation. Bless him some more. Father, we thank you. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. You are worthy to be magnified. There is no one like you, Lord. Mandoro bezige bro de shile te brahalota. Makata ba 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 lege de bosida. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, thank you for seeing me through the first week in the year. Seeing me through the second week again. I'm entering the third week today. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Are you sure the Lord is hearing your voice? Give him praise some more. Give him praise some more. Don't ever be tired of thanking him. Give him praise some more. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks.
Let your amen be loud. I say in Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. Wherever you are, I'd like you to lift your voice to the Almighty God, everyone with a loud voice, and say, Father. Father. Make it loud and say, Father. Father. This year, draw me closer to you, O God. In the name of Jesus. Raise your voice and pray for yourself right now. This year, Lord, draw me closer to you. That songwriter said, I want to be where you are. Draw me closer to you, O God. I don't want to be far away from you. Draw me closer to you, my Father, by your mighty hand. Draw me closer to you, O God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, if you are where you can take a knees, if you have good knees, I'd like us to go on our knees before the Almighty God. It's a sign of humility and surrenderedness as we sing this song to Him. There is no holy as the Lord. There is no beside Him. Sing it. why you have admonished us in your word that because you are holy we should be holy also father thank you for how far you have helped us since this year began thank you for those mighty testimonies thank you for the ones you will yet give us this new week we give you glory and praise father lord god almighty we want to pray to you this morning that you please lord draw us closer to yourself make us holy like you thank you heavenly father Lord, we know your word is blessed already. Send it forth with power and fire. Do what only you can do, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Everyone say very loud, Amen.
Stand to your feet wherever you are. Lift your two hands and give the Lord a loud hallelujah. Now you can put your hands together for the Lord and please be seated. God bless you. In Jesus' name. How many of you enjoyed that special song? Can we celebrate it? Is that the way you celebrate your own people? is the people of the world that are celebrating Beyonce now. They will be shouting and be screaming. Hallelujah. God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say a very loud amen. A very loud amen. Welcome every one of you to church today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the owner of the church himself. And I'm praying that the Lord God Almighty will speak to our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Can you say a very loud amen? amen? We want to appreciate God for what he has done for us in the 10 days of power. Can we give Jesus a big hand of praise? Hallelujah. Fasting is not the doctrine of any church. Fasting is actually a scriptural prescription by Jesus Christ himself. And he said, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and by fasting. There are some levels of empowerment you will not be able to attain until you combine your prayers with fasting. There are certain mountains in our lives that will never move until we combine our prayers with fasting. And we want to bless the name of the Lord for helping us for these 10 days. I believe that all the encounters of these 10 days will be permanent in our lives Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And remember, it doesn't just end there. It's our custom in this church that every Tuesday, Every Tuesday when we have our midweek service, it's actually a prayer meeting. Every Tuesday, every member of Open Heaven Church, we are expected to wait on the Lord in a fast. Amen? Amen. Don't become lazy. Don't let comfort bring about an excuse for you to be spiritually lazy. Amen? So every Tuesday, we are waiting on the Lord in a fast. Breaking time starts from 3 p.m., God gives you the grace, you want to push a little bit higher, four, five, six, seven, whatever, that's fine. But at least the least you can is um, 3 p.m. However, exceptions can be made for senior citizens, the elders in our midst, that, you know, they have plenty of strength in Jesus' name. Amen. And also for people that are on medication. If you are on strict medication, please don't tempt God and don't tempt yourself. If you are on medication, um, taking your pills does not mean you are not a man or a woman of faith. As a matter of fact, taking it and praying is actually what shows that you are actually a man and a woman of faith. Amen. Amen. So while you are trusting God for your healings, while you are trusting God for him to perfect whatever is in your body, please ensure you take your pills. The Lord will help our understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I also understand that, you know, during the course of last year, towards the tail end of the year, myself and my family, we decided to you know, go to Nigeria for the Christmas days and all of that. And when I came back, uh, it, it came to my notice that so many people, you know, wanted to see me and there was no way we could. And when we came back, of course, crossover night, then, you know, for the passing program and all of that. So now this is what is going to happen starting from Tuesday. Okay, tomorrow is a public holiday, Tuesday service. Okay, so starting from Wednesday, starting from Wednesday, the office doors will be open and all of that. However, the Bible says, let everything be done decently and in order, okay? If you, for some of you that are older members of the church, you know that I try to discourage while we are ministering to people, then a lot of people are crowding the overflows, you know, people need to be at their jobs and all of that. So that is why we encourage you to always try to call ahead. So all you need to do, you can um, call Brother Henry. Say, Brother, Brother Henry, please, can you come forward this week? Let's celebrate this young man. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So what you can do is just 
Let him see your face. <laughs> Are you shy? Where's your wife? Don't worry, your wife's got you covered. Amen. <laughs> All right, so you can see Brother Henry. God bless you. You can return back to your duty. Place. So you can see Brother Henry after the service. Um, he's, he's, he's a very nice guy. He's going to work with your schedule. I mean, my own schedule, my schedule is my schedule. I dwell in the house of the Lord, just like David said. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. So this is where I dwell. <laughs> okay, so you don't need to worry about my time. We worry about your own time. Okay, so... Um, he will give you a better time. He knows my schedule already. He knows the days I'm available. He knows the times I'm available. So he's going to work with you, and we can come. Please let nobody die in silence in this church. This is a spiritual family. This is your house. It's the house of your father. If you are going through stuff, don't keep quiet. Say something out. You need something, but please don't be that person that will come and take advantage of the church. I tell people, if you go to the church and you lie, you have your house rent, and you come and lie that you don't have it. You know what you have done? You have simply signed up for poverty, generational poverty. And not just you, generational. And it will be trans. Yes, that's what you have come to do. You know you have the money, you go and use it for funny material things that you don't need. You are shopping, buying shoes and clothes and things you don't need. Buying a shreddy for funny parties up and down, you know. You want to make your air every week. All those little, little things. And you cannot afford it. If you can afford it, it's okay. You can even make your air every day. That's fine. You want to change your wig every day, that's okay. That's fine. You want to paint your nails every day, that's okay. As long as you can afford it. But if you go and spend your money carelessly on irrelevant things, and you come to church to come and lie and take advantage of the system, in your mind you think you are smart. You are really not smart. You are a dumb bag. Trust me. Because what you are doing is heavens, they are recording what you are doing and they will just put your name on the list of permanent welfare. <laughs> so you become a welfare project till you die. So every time they need to be contributing house rent for you and buying gas in your car, uh, I know there is nobody like that here. Amen. So please, if you are sick, you need the ministration, please let us know. You are going through stuff. You need counseling. You need material things, whatever it is. Just see Brother Henry. He will tell you what to do. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Very quickly, by the grace of God, the theme for the month of January 2018 says, who can tell me before they put it on the screen? Who can tell me? Stop chewing him out. If you are sure, just say it. Oh, look at them. Okay, say with me, absolute holiness is a possibility. Please, I've told you, you are now in doubt. Stop saying possibility. Oh, my. Don't come and pollute my accent, please. You know I was born here, amen. <laughs> All right, so absolute holiness is a possibility. That word, I believe, is self-explanatory enough. And the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16, if you want to put it on the screen for them, that's our anchor verse for the month, which will be guiding our teaching through the course of the month. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16. I'd like us to read it together as a family. Everybody, let's read one to go. Because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. If you have been a, an older member of this church, you've discovered that the moment we start the year, Every January, we like to talk about holiness. We like to talk about purity. We like to talk about consecration and all of that. Why do we do that? Because there must be a cleanup before a visitation. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are too holy to behold iniquity. So if sin and iniquity is still around us, the likelihood that will be visited by God is low. When oh, it comes around and he sees sin, he can't stand it. It turns away. And that is why we use the foundational month, which is January, because the Bible says in Psalms chapter 11 and verse 3, Psalms chapter 11 and verse 3, it said, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If you speak to civil engineers, builders, and architects, and all of those guys that are into construction and building, I mean, I'm not an engineer, I don't know, 
and I've spoken with quite a few of them, if you speak with architects, with builders, with engineers, they will tell you that the most important part of a project is the foundation. I've heard them say that to me many times. They say, Pastor, we don't mind making mistakes at the seventh floor, at the eleventh floor, fixing the bathroom, fixing the toilet, fixing the kitchen. We can always correct that. He said, but when we make a mistake at the foundation, we are in trouble. I've heard many of them say that to me. And some of you that you are probably in that profession, you can attest to that. They said, the moment we make a problem on the foundation and we wreck the structure, ah, it's trouble. So that is why the first month is the most important month of the year. And you must take it because even the Bible makes us to understand that every first thing belongs to God. Every parent here, your first child, you must dedicate him or her to God. Everything. God said, if you don't give me the first, the rest will become accursed. Everything that has to do, he said, first, give me. Give me. Even when you look at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, that's why he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Even look at the tithe that the God said we should pay through prophet Malachi, Malachi chapter 3. I tell people, your tithe is not your 10%. Your tithe is your first 10%. Not after you have paid all the bills and settled or whatever. They know, oh, 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 you are getting it wrong. The first. God is jealous about the first. He told the children of Israel. He told Moses, tell all of them, all their first children, their first child, first male. It doesn't matter whether it's male or female. All their firstborn, they should dedicate it to me. That's what God said to Moses. All the animals, take their first child. Dedicate it to me. Take their first seed. Dedicate it to me. Say with me, the first belongs to God. So that's why January is a crucial month. And if you notice, I mean, not all churches, it's not a ritual, it's not a doctrine, but you will see very well that most churches, not all, just like I said, most churches you will see that the month of January is always a fasting month for them. You hear three days fasting in this church, seven days fasting in this church, 10 days fasting in this church, 21 days, 40 days, whatever. A lot of people, because of that understanding that the first belongs to God. So we try to use that first one to deny ourselves, deny our flesh, deny food and whatever. To give it to the Lord. Lord, we sacrifice this to you. Because fasting is a form of sacrifice. Psalm 63 from verse 1. He said, oh Lord my God. Early will I seek thee, my soul long get for you, and my flesh thirsted for you in a dry and thirsty land wherein there is no water. Verse 2, to see thy power and thy glory. So we dedicate that first month to him so that the remaining 11 months we can enjoy the glory of the Lord. Can I hear your loud amen to that? Yeah. So that is why, don't let it get strange, if Jesus tarries, by next year, January, again, you discover that we're still going to be talking about holiness again. Let's consecrate ourselves. Surrender ourselves. Cleanse ourselves. So that the moment God comes, he sees a clean vessel. Then he can begin to dwell with you. All through this year, the Lord will not leave us alone. Amen. You better say a better amen. amen. I said the Lord will not leave you alone this year. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So quickly this morning, in just about 15 or 20 minutes, I'm going to be sharing on what I've captioned, dealing with the Achan in my camp. Dealing with the Achan in my camp. Dealing with the Achan in my camp. And I'm going to read this story for you. The story is kind of long, but I'm going to make it as fast as I can because I need to read it out to you because that's where we are taking the teaching from. It's Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7, we're going to read it from verse 1 to the end. If you have your Bibles, you can open it. If you don't have it, just look at the screen. I'm sure the media guys will gladly help you. The Bible says, but the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. He took the accursed thing. And the Bible says the anger of the Lord was kindled against all of them. Any one of you that you have any accursed thing with you, whether in your life or in your home or in your possession, in the name of Jesus, the mercy of the Lord will prevail for you today. Amen. I don't like your amen at all. Amen. I say the mercy of the Lord is visiting you right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 2, the Bible says, And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth Evan, on the east side of Bethel, 
and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed I. Verse 3, and they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. Verse 5, and the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the heart of the people melted and became as water. The children of Israel, they never lose any battle anywhere. But for some reason, they lost this one. Uh -uh. And I, if you have been to Israel before, I is a very small town. You can imagine, let's say, you hear that the city of Richardson goes into war with the entire city of Los Angeles. Then they are telling you that the city of Richardson defeats Los Angeles. Something like that. Or you hear that maybe the tiny nation of Panama or Haiti fight with America, and they beat America hands, hands down. How can that happen? It's like a taboo. It's like an ab abomination. Ah, it's a very small town. So look at what happens in verse 5. No, verse 6 now. Verse 6, the Bible says, And Joshua rent his clothes. He couldn't believe it. He rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the even tide. He went flat face from morning till evening. He and the elders of Israel, all of them, he called all the elders, all the ministers, let's go on the floor and put dust upon their heads. In Bible times, whenever people put dust upon their heads, it's when they've offended God. I don't know if you remember when David committed adultery and he killed the husband of the woman. That was what David did. The Bible told us that David rented his clothes and he put ashes upon his head. The moment you put ashes upon your head, everybody in the city knows you have offended God. It's like a sign of humility to the Lord in their day. They, they just stay on their floor, and they put their face to the ground. David will remove the crown. They will put ashes. They will tear their clothes and stay there until evening time. It was a sign of restitution, saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I know I've messed up. Please forgive me. And that was what Joshua did there. Verse 7. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought these people over Jordan? To deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan? Verse 8. O oh Lord, what shall I say? When Israel turned their backs before their enemies, for the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth. And what will thou do unto thy great name? Verse 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, because Joshua now began to ask God questions. You brought us here. How come? What am I going to tell the people? They are defeating us now. They are killing our wives and our children. Look at what the Bible says in verse 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get up, my friend. Get up. Enough of all this your lamentation. Get thee up. Wherefore thou liest upon thy face. Get up, my friend. Sit down. You've been asking me questions now. Let me give you answer. And God said to him, verse 11, Israel had sinned. They have sinned. Ah, oh God, we didn't know anything. What did we do? Israel has sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. They stole from people and they mixed it with their own. Verse 12. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. That's why your enemies are defeating you, because you are a thief. You are an arm robber. You have taken from their costing and mixed it with your own. But turn their backs before their enemies because they were cursed. Neither will I be with you anymore. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Except, one condition. Except ye destroy the accursed from among you. Verse 13, up, get up now, sanctify the people. That's what we are doing in January. Sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou cannot stand before thy enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. You are not able to stand before your enemies to defeat them until you remove what is not good in your life. 
Verse 14. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which the Lord shall which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. He began to give them the format that we are going to use tomorrow morning. So, for example, we call your just family. You line up. Then after, we call Baba, Mama, the children, one by one. From there, we move to Ajibola's family. Move. We move to the Okoroko's family. Move. We move to the Donald Trump's family. Everybody. You will line up like this. One by one. That is how the sanctification will take place. This is not a funny matter. Verse 15. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accosting shall be burnt with fire. Somebody say, God forbid. God forbid. Thank God for Jesus' is coming. Thank God that he came. Shall be burnt with fire. He and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. Verse 16. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarites, and he brought the family of the Zarites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, and of the tribe of Judah was taken. Verse 19. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him. And tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. Verse 20. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And thus and thus have I done, when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment. A goodly Babylonish garment. All of you that when you carry your iPad now, they say clearance sales in course. Eh, calls. What's the name of that stock? Calls. And Ross. And the one in Galleria. You can't take your eyes off the garment. You are not different from Akan. Every week you must go to Nostrum to buy shoes. You are not different. You can't take your eyes off. It's a major sin against the Almighty God. Do you know what destroyed Akan? The sin of covetousness. He couldn't take his eyes off beautiful garment. So you need to sanctify your eyes this year. And all the men too that are always looking. You know what I'm talking about. The thing pass, you look. <laughs> then you look again. You know, I told a friend of mine, I said, the first look is not always a sin. It is the second look <laughs> ah, that is a sin. And the third look, ah, is an iniquity. <laughs> that is where the trouble starts. Go and read the story of David. The first time he looked, there was no problem. But something told him, ah, oh, no. <laughs> Our lady has flat stomach, you know. Ah. Then he looked again. And the second look was what landed him in trouble. We will not enter trouble this year. Amen. You better say amen. amen. All right. Then I, when I saw, when I saw, when I saw, when I saw, <laughs> uh, the spoils, a goodly Babylonish garment. Do you know that one of the people that will enter heaven first are blind people? I'm telling you. You know why? Most of the sins committed by men, it preempts by what we see. It is, it is in this modern time of the world you see people, they want to ad, advertise wristwatch. Then they use a naked woman. Then you are trying to ask yourself, what has a naked woman got to do with wristwatch? They want to advertise a car, they will use, you know what I'm talking about. They want to advertise toothpaste, they will use... You know why? They know the weakness of men. They know that the major sins come through our eyes. No wonder Jesus said, if it is your eyes that will not make you enter heaven, block it off. That's why I told you that the first set of people that will enter heaven are blind people. Because all those things you are looking, they can't even see it. So even when you say, ah, oh, mother babe said to them, they say, eh? what do you talk? <laughs> they don't know what you are talking about. <laughs> they don't know. What you are talking about? 
Glory be to Thank you, sir. They don't know what they're talking about. Hey. And 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels were in verse 21. Wait. Then I coveted them. I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of covetousness in your life that makes you to be going after what is not your own. Making you to go after what you cannot afford. You are putting your husband under pressure. Even you yourself, you already have high blood pressure and hypertension combined. Every spirit of covetousness in your life, I cast it out right now. You better say it very loud, amen. amen. Everybody open your eyes, look at me. The moment you solve the problem of covetousness, 80% of your life's problems are solved. Why do people go into debt? Go and check. In most cases, covetousness. Not because God has not blessed them, but there are certain things they cannot afford for now, but they want to get it by force. Now, they are already checking Toyota Camry 2018 now against tax season. They are checking already. Because in their mind, two of their friends have changed the car. Even though nothing is wrong with the one she's driving right now, she must change it. There is one demon pushing her. Change, change, now, change, change. Let's move quickly. Let's move quickly because of time. Verse 22. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran unto the tent. And behold, it was hid in the tent and the silver under it. Verse 23. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold. At the end of the day, all the things he stole, he ended up not using them. Just like Judas. The money he collected to sell Jesus, 12 shekels of silver, he ended up not spending it. Ended up not spending it. And they took everything. And his sons. Listen, you know, this is the reason why you should not steal. Because when the judgment comes, it's not just coming to you alone. It's coming to your wife and your children. And your grandchildren. No wonder the Bible says the cause of the Lord is in the house of the thief. God will have said, the cause of the Lord is upon the thief. He said, uh -uh, it's in the house of the thief. When the judgment is coming, even your drivers, housemaid, household, cook, cleaner, innocent people that just came to work, they partake of it. Why do you want to jeopardize your destiny and that of your generation? By covetousness. Put your right hand upon your eye, everybody. And in the name of Jesus Christ, every spirit of covetousness, in the name of Jesus, I cast them out of your life today. The grace for discipline, to discipline your eyes this year. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus. Say very loud, amen. amen. Now look at it, verse 25. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us, you this guy? Just because of you. Look at the suffering. We have lost 36 people because of you. Why has that troubled us? And Joshua laid a curse on him. He said, the Lord shall trouble thee this day. And what happened? And all Israel, they stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Even his innocent children that knew nothing about whatever he did, they stoned all his children to death and his wives. And verse 26, and they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So that the Lord turned from the, turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Acre unto this day. Who or what is an Achan? Remember we said dealing with the Achan in my camp. Now Achan in the Bible was a man figure. Who or what is an Achan? Number one. Achan is that thing that disobeys the instructions of God. Achan is that thing, God bless you media, that disobeys the instructions of God. That is an Achan. Number two, who or what is an Achan? Achan is that thing that makes God turn his back on you, just like we saw in verse 7. Anything that makes God to turn his back on you is an Achan. Achan is that thing that makes God turn his back on you. Number three. Who or what is an Achan? Achan is what makes the enemy 
have the upper hand in your life and in your destiny. That thing that makes the enemy have the upper hand in your life and in your destiny. Verse 11 that we read. The moment Achan stole, the nation of Ai, the small city of Ai, began to destroy Joshua and his men. Began to kill them. The enemy began to have the upper hand over them because of Achan. So Achan is that thing that makes the enemy have the upper hand in your life and your destiny. Number four, who or what is Achan? Achan is the accursed thing in your possession. Is the accursed thing in your possession that makes the presence of God to depart from you. Any accursed thing in your possession that makes the presence of God to depart from you is an acre. We saw that in verse 12, Joshua chapter 7 that we read. And finally, number 5. Who or what is an Achan? Achan, this is shocking now. Achan is never a stranger. Achan is always an enemy within your camp. Your Achan is never a stranger. Mm -mm. It's either you are that Achan. It's either an habit in your life is the Achan. It's either one of your family members are the Achan or your close associate. Achan is never far from you. Mm -mm. It's always within your camp. Now, quickly as we close, how do I identify the Achan in my camp? Okay, now that we have talked about this guy now, how do I have given you definitions of who or what is an Achan? Right now, how do I identify the Achan in my camp? This is where I want you to pay attention. So that while you are sitting down there and while you depart from this service today, you can set your heart, set your home, set your business, set everything that has to do with you to identify the Achan and quickly deal with them. How do I identify the Achan in my camp? Number one, humble yourself before the Lord. Humble yourself before the Lord. Just like we saw in verse 6, we were told that Joshua and all the elders, they fell flat face. That was a sign of humility and soberness. Humble yourself before the Lord. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, it said, He, my people who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. A lot of times, a lot of us pray, we don't get answers from God. You know why? You are not praying from a, a heart of humility. A lot of people even come to God's presence with so much pride and arrogance in them. That is this. Ah. That is the criteria. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves before they pray. Humility is the first I want to see. If you are not going to be humble, go, go, go to your prayer and your problem. Go, 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 go. If they shall humble themselves, number one, number two, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then what will happen? Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive them their sin and I will heal their land. Healing is coming to your home this year. I don't like that. I say healing is coming to your family. Healing is coming to your business. Healing is coming to your career. Healing is coming to your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say very loud, amen. So you want to identify that Achan in your camp. That guy that has been causing trouble for you all the while. The first thing is humble yourself before the Lord. And number two, how do I identify the Achan in my camp? Number two, seek the face of the Lord in prayers of inquiry. That was what Joshua did in verse 7. Seek the face of the Lord in prayers of inquiry. What do we mean by prayers of inquiry? Prayers when you with every sense of humility, you begin to ask God questions. Joshua was asking, God, what is going on? Why are we being defeated? Why is my life like this? It's different from, oh Lord, before March, uh, give me a car, uh, give me a husband, give me a green card. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's not prayers of inquiry. When you want to find out, why is this thing like this? And that's why the Bible says in Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, it said, call on me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. So there are things you don't know that you need to know. But God said, what will happen? Call on me. Call on me, my son. Call. When you ask me, I will tell you what is going on. The person behind this thing. The person doing this thing. This person. God said, call on me and I will answer you. So seek the face of the Lord and pray. Prayers of inquiry. Number three. How do I identify the Achan in my camp? Pay rapt attention to God's instructions and write them down. 
Pay rapt attention to God's instructions. And write them now. Some of you, you are not yet in the habit of writing. Let me tell you the truth. The God we serve is not a waster of resources. God is never a waster of information. God is not a waster. Despite the fact that he had everything in abundance. Now, how do I know that God hates waste? Let me tell you. There was a particular time when Jesus was done with a crusade. And he told the disciples, ah, these people, they have been following us for all our crusades. Time to time. I think they should be hungry by now. Let's get, some, get, let's get them some food to eat. And they said, oh, there is a little boy here. He said he has uh, five loaves of bread and two fishes. Jesus said, okay, bring it. And as soon as they brought the five loaves of bread and two fishes to him, the Bible says he lifted up his hand and he said, Father, I thank you. The moment he thanked God, baskets of fishes, Titus, Geisha, Tilapia, Croker, they began to land, boom, from heaven. Then multiplied bread from Osis Bakery. They began to land vroom, from Auntie Anne's. They were coming down. Vroom. And they landed, not Southwest bread. <laughs> so they began to come. Now, they didn't buy those things. Jesus, by reason of thanksgiving, those things landed from heaven. Now, because they didn't buy it, that should have been a ticket for them to waste the leftovers. Because they didn't buy it. I mean, well, what is it? okay, they didn't finish it. Eh, go and trash it now. But you know what Jesus said? After the 5,000 men were filled, and you know the Bible says 5,000 men. So you know, you know how much the women will be. Because I've never seen any church on earth where men are made more than women. So if they say 5,000 men at that crusade, ah, the women will be like 25 million. <laughs> you know women, God bless all our women, amen. They know every prayer mountain everywhere. They know all the churches everywhere. <laughs> okay, so... Now, after they were done eating, the Bible says Jesus told the disciples, he said, gather up the fragments that nothing be lost. That's Jesus himself. So all of you that when you want to dish your food at home, you dish the portion you cannot finish and you trash it. May the Lord have mercy on you. Because there are people looking for just one spoon they can't get. Go and look at them in Africa. All they are looking for is that your own leftover that you poured in the trash yesterday night. They are looking for it. They are crying day and night. Go! Just a little. But destiny refused to smile on them. Then you, you carry your waste. Just think it. Continue. Jesus said, gather up the fragments that nothing be lost. He told disciples, I must not. If you trash anything here, you die. You don't trash anything in this place. So God is not a waster. So now when God gives you instructions, some of you, you come and say, oh, Pastor, I used to dream a lot. I don't know, for almost six months now, I don't even know I've not been dreaming again. Then I ask them, can I see your dream book? Dream book. Which one is dream book? <laughs> All the revelations, the visions, the dreams God has been showing you, where did you write them? Eh, actually, I didn't write them. Ah. The God we serve doesn't waste. That's why you see that sometimes when he gives you a business idea and you are doing slow motion, you are still contemplating. Three months after, you are driving on 635. You see somebody else doing that business. If you are waiting, he will just give the idea to another person. A lot of people, God has called them to ministry since. They were still doing slow motion, looking for the approval of men. You know, what, what will they say if I, uh, what will they say? What will they? What will he say? What will she say? God said, this one is doing slow motion. Carry the call. Give to another person. I don't have time. I don't have time. So, for you to identify the Akan in your camp, when God gives you instructions, get into the habit of writing them down. Every one of you, when you are going to bed, instead of putting your phone by your head and you are generating radiation, I will kill your brain cells. Why don't you put your Bible and a writing material by your side? The moment you wake up from that dream, whether it makes meaning to you or not, write it down. Even the God we serve is a writer. How many of you know that God writes? You don't know? Okay, what did, how did he write the Ten Commandments? He writes. I can't wait to see his handwriting. When I get to heaven, I say, God, sign this paper for me. <laughs> I want to see your signature, how it looks. <laughs> He's a writer. 
And that's why in Abaku chapter 2 from verse 1, he said, I will stand upon my watch and watch what he will say to me. And what I will say back to him when I am approved. Verse 2, he said, write the vision. Write the vision. Get into the writing habit, every one of you. Don't be lazy. Stop acting like an illiterate. Get into the habit of writing. God shows you things. Sometimes you are driving. A thought will just flash your mind. Boom. Why don't you buy this and export it? Why don't you go for this training? Why don't you call this person? Why don't you send this email? The moment that thought, because most times, the instructions of God, they come in the form of a flash. Boom. The moment it comes, you don't do anything with it. He gives you 24 hours. He gives the flash to another person, another serious person. What do you do? As you are driving, look for the next exit. Boom. Just park. Take your pen. Thank you, Jesus. Write it down. Whether you are executing it immediately or not, it doesn't matter. Just write it down. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So number three, we say pay rapt attention to God's instructions and write them down. Number four, how do I identify the Achan in my camp? Number four, be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you read verse 16 to verse 19 of that Joshua chapter 7 that we read, there was no way we were ever told that God said audibly to Joshua that this boy is the one that stole those things. The Bible says Joshua was just calling all the families one by one. Read it back when you get to verse 16 to verse 19. He was just calling them one by one. He will look at them. But while they were coming to his front, all the families, they were lining up, they were calling. In his mind, he was, Father exposed the thief among them. In the name of Jesus. He was looking at them one by one, exposed the thief. So they were saying stuff to him. He wasn't listening to them. He was listening to his God. And the moment he can step forward, the Holy Spirit must have told him, that's the guy. That's the guy. Joshua did not negotiate with him. He just said, he can, come, follow me. Good boy. Come. Come, come. So, I know you didn't do it on purpose. I know it was a mistake, but tell me, what did you take? Jesus, I took it. I know. Don't worry. Just tell me. Where did you keep it? They are under the bed. Okay. You are dead now. <laughs> Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Many of you have dabbled into businesses and they duped you. Do you know why they duped you? If you had listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit, the 419 people would have taken your money away. But you were so excited with the rave of the moment. Everybody, ah, this, is, this one is what he's selling now. You better move now. Which is selling now. Wada, 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 wada. He's selling now. Then you move without listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And you know the Holy Spirit, you know how he speaks? The Bible says, and the wind came, and God was not in the wind. And the fire came, and God was not in the fire. The rain came, brrr, God was not in the rain. And the Bible says, then there came a still small voice. Hearers of God knows that God is not a shouter. That is why you need to learn to maintain inner quietness. Some of you, your mind is too busy. Even while you are here now listening to preaching, your mind is in Kano, selling pepper already. Your mind is in Houston. Ah, you will go and buy fish or something. You are here now, your mind is in Southwest. Ah, I need to buy pepper and Maggie and curry. And you are here. Your mind is too busy, so the Holy Ghost is speaking, you can't hear. Because you are too noisy inside. Learn to maintain inner quietness if you must ever hear the voice of God. Anyone that cannot do away with their phone, go and check. They never hear the voice of God. It's so bad. Do you know even when they are going to the toilet, they carry phone to the toilet? Are you aware? Do you know there are people like that? Oh. That is. They need help. It's that bad. They are going to restroom. They carry phone to restroom. And I'm wondering, Really? They carry it to the restroom. Restroom. They are under the shower. Soap everywhere on their face. When they phone, huh? <laughs> what is your problem? What is your problem? Do you even know there are some people? They are praying in the midst of prayer. And their phone will ring. Hello, Nkechi, I'm praying right now. Let me call you back. Yagalaba, yagalaba. Shokolobo, lobo, lobo. Ete, kete, kete. Oba, ga, 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 ga. Father, in the name of Jesus. Ele, bobo. And as they are praying, they are using this tie to be looking at the phone again to see if it's beeping. 
Father, we thank you for today. We give you glory and praise. Hello? Hello, Austin. Me can call you back now. Biko, eh? Biko, Kambia, eh? Kavia, Nabia, Nabia. What are you doing? Who are you praying to? God Almighty? Is the one you are praying to? And you are picking phone every two, two minutes. Nabia, Nabia. What's that? Are you serious right now? I, I shake my head for you. <laughs> so be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians chapter 2, and verse 16. He said, who have known the mind of Christ that he may instruct him? He said, but we have the mind of Christ. And finally, number five. Finally, number five, because we have to pray before we go. Finally, number five. Carry out the instructions you have received from God earlier. Verse 22 to verse 26. Verse 22 to verse 26 of that Joshua chapter 7. Everything that God said Joshua should do was what he did. He didn't apply any sentiment. God said the moment you catch the thief, kill that guy, set him on fire, destroy him, and destroy all that is told. Carry out God's instructions to the letter. Carry out God's instruction to the letter. Carry it out. Don't spare yourself. I've shared the story of the great man of God, Pa Iye Adeboye, with you. Baba said many years ago, he used to be a chronic professional expert for Nikito and Adotra. That man you see. He was into women, different women, even as a married woman, married man. Into women, as a lecturer, University of Illinois, University of Lagos, was into women. So when the Lord called him to ministry and he wanted to stop adultery, he did something. So one day he said one guy came to him. And the guy was saying, Daddy, I don't know. I've been struggling with sexual immorality. I've been doing this. I want to stop this. Thing. Each time I pray, I will find myself going back there. <laughs> Baba said, you have come to meet with the right person. I used to be in your shoes too, so I know what you are dealing with. However, I will teach you my secret. Are you sure you want to stop? The guy said, yes. Okay. Baba said, he asked the guy again. Are you sure you want to stop sexual immorality? You want to be faithful to just your wife? He said, yes. Baba said, okay, no problem. follow me. Followed Baba. Baba took him to the altar. When they got to the altar, Baba said, okay, so now, you are going to lay on this altar now, and you will tell God, the next time I fornicate or commit adultery, may my organ never rise up again. <laughs> may I become impotent. Are you ready, good? He said, ah, ah, daddy, that was. <laughs> you see, you are not ready. You are not ready. You are doing, ah, uh ah. -uh. <laughs> Verse 22 to 26. I have a question. Is that guy ready? No. He's not ready. Because if you are ready, you will do it. That's a proof that you are ready. He says, say now, the next time I do it, impotency, bam, no story. Uh, the guy say, ah, no, sir. Ah. Baba say, I told you, leave this place. <laughs> You're wasting my time. I'm not ready. What were the instructions that God gave to Joshua? He said, identify their customs in and around. So you and I, what are those accustoms? It can be bad habits. Some of you, you have stolen properties. Some of you, your own can be disobedient, just like Saul. The Bible says you should identify them. Identify those things. Then what, what was the second instruction? He told him in verse 25, he said, curse Achan, curse him. You need to curse those things. You know your own is smoking. Curse it. I curse smoking in the name of Jesus. Father, I make a vow before you. The next time I smoke, let me have lung cancer. Yes. That is how to be free. I'm telling you now. As a matter of fact, don't only say it, write it and paste it in your room. Paste it everywhere. Paste it in your shower. As a reminder. The next time I smoke, lung cancer. The next time a man that is not my husband climbs on me, Lord. I don't know what to say. Breast cancer. And the third instruction, the first thing he said, identify it. The second thing he said, curse it. The 
The third instruction, God said, destroy completely the acre. Kill it, verse 26. No mercy. Then after that, you can receive restoration. And Joshua followed the instruction to the letter. Even though he loved the boy Achan, it was one of his boys, God said, no. God said, kill the boy, kill all his family members, all the things he stole, burn them alive. That was what Joshua said. And that was what Joshua did. Because we are going to pray right now. Everybody bow down your heads. If you are here, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. You want to say, Master, <laughs> I don't only have an Achan. I am an Achan myself. I want you to have mercy upon me. Everybody close your eyes. You, that person, just lift up your right hand. Let me pray with you quickly so we can pray and close. You know you are not born again. Or you used to be born again and your born again is not current. This is your moment. Jesus can come tonight. I'm just going to wait for 30 seconds. If you are not lifting up your hand, then I know you don't want to come. That is fine. I leave you and your God alone. Is there anybody like that? You want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ? You want to say, Pastor, just pray with me. Pray with me so I can be saved. You, that honest person, lift up your right hand wherever you are. Lift up your right hand. Let me pray with you. Quickly, quickly, quickly. You will be born again. You will be born again. Your sin will go away forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody stand to your feet where you are. And you are going to pray this. Just four prayers. And we'll close this service. Just for prayer. Lift up your two hands where you are, everyone. And please, only the people that want to be sincere should pray these prayers. If you know you still want to keep playing games with God, you are in and out, you are cold today, you are hot tomorrow. You don't have to pray it. You can be watching the rest of all. Everybody lift up your two hands. Say with me, Father. Father. Open my eyes. Open. Say it loud and say, Father. Father. Open my eyes. To identify every Achan in my life. In my home, in my work, in my business, in my environment. Father, open my eyes to identify every Achan around me. In the name of Jesus. Raise your voice and begin to pray now. Redo Sibala Duajisha. Father, open my eyes to identify every Achan around me. Anyone that is making you to turn your back on me, Lord, open my eyes to identify them. Whether it's my spouse, whether it's my children, any of my children, whether it's any habit in my life, Father, help me open my eyes today to be able to identify the Achan in my life, in my home, in my work, in my environment. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Everybody open your eyes, look at me. You see, the truth is this. In most cases, the Achan in our lives is not a human being. The Achan is always an habit in our lives. Habit. There's a businessman, very well-to-do businessman, doing very well. All of a sudden, things were not moving the way they were moving. Uh -uh. So this guy came. We started to pray. I mean, very blessed man. Very, ah, he used to settle me very well. Ah, yes, you are. Ah, ah. But I noticed that for some time, this guy never shake body. Ah, ah. So he said, Pastor, I've been wanting to see you. I said, come, 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 come. What's going on? He said, I just noticed that all the places I get business these days, when I go, you know, they don't. Ah. I said, oh, really? I brought him to the altar. He began to pray. He began to pray. The Lord opened my eyes. Boom. And the Lord told me that the guy had dabbled into adultery. And I stopped the prayer. I said, oh, God, open your eyes. I said, you only told me half truth here. I said, you are doing adultery. And he said, Pastor, ah, it's been long. I said, ah. That one that is long has made it a long thing. Now that's why everything is long now. That was the inroad that cut off his supplies from heaven. He began to pray for mercy. And I mean, by the grace of God, the Lord has restored him. Everything is going on well now. Every one of you that your supplies have been cut because of sin, there shall be restoration for you today. Amen. Say very loud, amen. amen. 
Now, whatever that Achan is in your life, you better be sincere to yourself. Some of you, your own is pornography. You are here now, you are still watching porn. You know it. Don't look at me. You know. When your wife has gone to bed, you pretend as if you want to go and do something. You are on your phone. You are, you know, you are. Pornography. Pornography. And you know it. Some of you, ungodly habits. Whatever that Achan is in your life. The Bible told, God told Joshua to curse that guy. And he cursed him. Do you want to curse that Achan in your life right now? Now with a loud voice, say with me, every Achan in my life. By the time we begin to pray, you begin to mention it yourself on your own. Say, every Achan in my life, I curse you to the root. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will trouble you that Achan. Raise your voice and begin to curse that Achan. Raise your voice, raise your voice, raise your voice. Whatever represents an Achan in your life. Sexual immorality, pride, lying. Some of you, you are still doing fetish things. You are still consulting herbalists, witch doctors. Whatever represents an Achan in your life, curse it to the root. Some of you, your own is gossip. You ladies, you better pray very well. Whatever represents an Achan in my life, I curse you to the root today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Just said the voice of the Lord. And the Lord said, tell them to be specific. Mention those things. Don't be afraid. There is no shame in it. Don't be shameful of what is gainful. The worst form of deception is self-deception. I told you here the night of 31st. I said, there are so many of you here. You are still struggling with certain things. Come out and say it. I've seen some men, they were struggling with it. Everything, things were going down. Things were not moving. I will tell them, Oga, don't even tell me. Tell your wife. They say, Pastor, I say, tell her. Let me tell you what happens. The moment you tell your wife, that is the first step of your freedom. Then she will begin to checkmate you. You are laughing. The Bible says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but he that confesses and repents shall have mercy. Some of those men, it was tough for them. They did it. You need to see them now. Doing well. They come back. They will come back with me with white envelope. They say, Pastor, thank you for that day. I said, I told you, brother. Come out clean. She won't kill you. Yes, come out clean. I'm struggling with this thing. No? Eh, okay. Of course, as a woman, of course, she will react. That's the woman nature. You know, she will cry. She might form. I'm packing out of the house. You know those things. She will throw all those their tantrums. Then after, she will still return. You and I know she will return. And when she return, we start from where we stopped. Are you back? Okay, welcome. <laughs> Whatever that Achan is, mention it before the Lord. Father, deliver me from this one. I need mercy. I don't want to die in this sin. I don't want to die in this thing. Father, cry out. Lift up your voice. Say with me, every Achan. In and around my life. Make it louder. Say every Achan. In and around my life. Every deadly habit that I'm struggling with, I receive deliverance today. In the name of Jesus. Raise your voice, begin to pray for yourself. Take your deliverance, take your deliverance, people of God. That is why you are here today. Take your deliverance from it. You know your own. Mention it before the Lord. It's your father. Forget about the next person to you. Stealing, lying, gossip, prayerlessness, stealing from God, fornication, adultery, smoking, pride, backbiting, whatever represents an Achan. Lord, I receive my deliverance today. The Bible says, Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the children of Jacob shall possess their possession. I receive my deliverance today. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. This is the final prayer now. Whatever you have lost because of the Achan, you want to recover all your losses right now. Just like that brother I told you, his businesses, the tap of supplies from heaven shut down because God was blessing him and he dabbled into adultery. You know, now there is money, you know, he was just doing up and down dollars, you know, renting, rent an apartment for one girl here, rent an apartment for another one, reality. you know, this one two days, this one three days, he was doing shift. 
<laughs> Lift up your two hands. Lift up your two hands. Say, in the name of Jesus. Only the people that want to recover should pray. Say, in the name of Jesus. I recover all my losses. Everything I have lost because of Achan, because of sin, because of carelessness. Today, by the mercy of God, I recover, I recover, I recover. Oh yeah, go ahead, begin to recover. Begin to recover, begin to recover. Begin to recover. All that you have lost, I recover in that name that's above every other name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All that I have lost to sin, all that I have lost to Acre, I recover, I recover, I recover back in multiple forms. In the name of Jesus, my lost businesses, my lost opportunities, my lost contracts, my lost job, my lost gifts, my lost potentials, my lost talents. I receive back now, I recover in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Everybody stretch out your two hands to all these altars. I pray for you. Father, I've spoken your word as you have instructed. For all your children here, whatever they have lost to any Achan, whatever they have lost, some of them have lost monies, some of them have lost relationships, they've lost their relationship with you, they've lost their power, some of them they've lost their gifts, some of them they've lost contracts, lost businesses because of sin. They did not even know. They couldn't trace the link. But today, by your mercy that is available, if you can say loud amen in the name of Jesus, recover your losses. That amen is too weak. I say recover your losses. Recover your losses in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Put your hands together for the Lord. Celebrate him. Give God hands. Please be seated. Very quickly, before we take our offerings and shut down in this service, we have prayed over the oil already. So please, let me have two of the ministers come forward quickly. Go and anoint all the children. And please, if you are a student here, you are going to be anointed the moment the ministers, they come back from the children, all the children's classes and the teens church. Ensure you anoint every one of them, the teenagers also. And you come back here, you anoint any one of you. Once they get back, if you are a student, the prayer I prayed only there is for academic prowess. So if you are a business person, you are taking the oil, I don't know what you've done with you. If you are a student, 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 once they get back, just lift up your right hand, whatever you are, they will anoint you. You can move down, you can move down. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Two of you, just divide yourself into the children's church. Go and attend to all the children first. Two of you, go to the children's church. All the children's classes and the teenagers. Two of you, go to the children's class. Go to the children's class. Then you can come back and handle the ones for here. Let's package our offerings quickly. And our tithes. Whatever you have come to honor the Lord. The Bible says we should never appear before him empty. Make it a duty this year. To celebrate the Lord with a good offering whenever you come before his presence. And also, ensure you pay your tithes. It's an instruction from the Lord. Whatever anybody is saying is irrelevant. Your tithe is the 10% of your increase and your income. Honor the Lord with it. The Lord will bless you. The windows of heaven shall be opened upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, if you want to swipe your debit card, you can go to the back side there. You don't have sufficient card enough, cash enough with you. You can just go to the back side. The officials are there to assist you. If you want to swipe your debit cards, just go there. Can we have the online platform on the screen, please? Somebody should come and help me. Oh? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, please, uh, by the grace of God, just like we were, it was announced to us late last year, we are trying to move to our own property so we can leave this rented place by the grace of God. Please, all the people that have signed up with the building funds, you want to donate towards the building, towards the um, securing properties for the house of the Lord, please, we want to encourage you. Um, you can do that. You can also give today. Some people have given. Let's continue to give until the properties will be ready. In the name of Jesus. And as you do that, God will bless you. In the name of Jesus. Some people already said they want to do like a recurring deposit every month. Please, you can see any of the officials at the back too. They will assist you in doing that. If you want to do a recurring deposit for the month, let's just ensure that we get that thing. Let's get it done so that we can move out of here. The Lord bless us in the name.